I was muted. Hello, everybody. It's Kate Richberg, and welcome to Free Tip Friday. It is Friday, August 25th. Um, sorry, I'm late. I'm just tardy this week. I'm uh, <laughs> so busy with so many things, catching up after the retreat and all of that stuff. So I have no excuse today other than I was racing around. So sorry about that, folks. But thank you so much for sticking around, hanging around. We've got a great, I like to say, I sound like a talk show host. We've got a great show for you today. <laughs> so um, we are going to play around with the Red Rocks Pearl Mix that I'm going to show you. Um, so I've got that going for you. Let me take a refreshing drink of water here. No squirrels today, thank goodness. I uh, Everything is secured. Everything is good. It's a little cooler here today, though, uh, in Fresno. This morning when I took my walk, it was fairly refreshing, which was nice. It's going to get hot a little bit later, but, you know, whatever. What are you going to do? So let's start out by showing you the Pearl Mix one more time. I'll show it to you up close and personal there. There it is. I called it Red Rocks, and I'll show you that. Uh, it's going to go live at noon today. So if you're watching us live, it is Friday, August 25th, and it will go live at 12 noon on our website. And let me show you where that is. Uh, if you folks are watching this later or watching this on a replay, uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us on the replay. Um, you can find us on all of our social Facebook, the bead table, um, on our Instagram feed on Pinterest. You can hit that like subscribe and notification button right on YouTube. And, uh, we're on social everywhere at beadshop.com. Shoot us an email. If you have any questions, you can find us on the other side of the computer at info at beadshop.com. So I'll show you this here. This is the Red Rocks kit. And I've got something a little bit different for you today. It's inspired by my buddy, Emily Miller. And we'll probably have Emily do it again with us because this is something I've been doing this uh, kind of uh, closure for a long time, but Emily really has it perfected. Um, and it's something she uses a lot in her own personal jewelry that she sells. So I want to share that with you today because it's kind of a fun tip. And then maybe we'll delve into it a little bit more uh, with Emily uh, sometime to um, to get her take on it because uh, it's always real fun. Um, let me show you though before we get going on. Um, let me get the bead shop screen up before we get going here on the broadcast. Um, I wanted to let me close some of this stuff up so. I'm not so confused here. There we go. Um, you can find right here on our homepage, if you scroll um, to our uh, new arrivals page, um, it's going to be right, right there under just in at noon. Okay, so it's going to go up uh, right at noon our time. You can see I'm scrolling down the just ins. You can see we still have some of those carved pieces available. We're going to be restocking those along with some fresh, um, some fresh ones. And you're going to see, uh, those come in, uh, come in soon. So you'll see those. Let me go back to our homepage though, because I wanted to also point out so see, it's right here, our Red Rocks Limited Edition Pearl Mix. All you do is click right on that photo as well, um, and it'll go under Available Mixes. You'll see the Red Rocks Pearl Mix will appear here at noon Pacific time. Hit Refresh uh, just in case, or you'll find it in our Just In section. I also wanted to um, let you know a couple of things we've done a survey and we've sent it out via our newsletter, but we also have it right here on our homepage and you can see that. 
Um, we really value your feedback and want to know what's up. We've already, it's just been out for two days, I think, or one day, I think it went out yesterday. We've already gotten some really great feedback from you folks um, that we really appreciate. Some of it we're going to um, implement uh, really quickly. Number one, we know that our wish list feature is not working, which uh, the wish list company that we were using just went out of business. So wish lists are a no-go right now, but I'm looking, I'm testing a couple. You might've actually seen one pop up on the site yesterday. I'm testing a couple um, because we wanna make that wish list feature even easier for you. So uh, hang tight, wish lists are coming back. Um, they went out without any notice at all. So the bad, bad news is, I know, that the wish lists weren't saved. So I know collective sigh, I heard it, all of you. But with our new and improved wish lists, hopefully we'll have some features that you folks wanted. So um, I'm so sorry. It's super irritating to us as well because I have things saved in my personal wish list for projects. All gone. But Fresh and new ones are coming. So um, go ahead and fill out that survey. We'd love to know. Oh, Terry, I'm so glad that you enjoyed doing the survey. That's awesome. Uh, some of you uh, also said things about coupons. It's kind of hard for you to find the coupon codes. So Drea is going to put a few, she's going to answer a few of the questions in upcoming newsletters. So it will um, maybe clarify some things. Uh, sometimes what we think is really super uh, uh, easy to find is, is not so much. So if you go here to bead shop, usually you can find um, some kind of a box or something on the homepage right here. You can see our coupon code for the month uh, is usually here somewhere. Sometimes it's up on the header. See right now where it says looking for deals and steals, sign up for our newsletter. If you click on that, it takes you to the newsletter. Yeah, see, you can see here, here's the wish list tab right there, right, right there. It's not working. Newsletter wish list. Sure. Um, but anyway, so we've got other things that are uh, coming up. So you'll see more stuff that way. Okay. So uh, that's that story. Let me go ahead and um, see what's going on. Let's see. Oh, and Carrie, I hope that you don't have COVID. COVID's going around again, folks. So let's Let's wash those hands. <laughs> and, you know, I wore a mask the other day. I wore another mask when I was out. I was all, I'm just going to mask just for fun. Plus, I then I didn't have to put on lipstick. So, you know, what are you going to do? Um, so, oh, my gosh, Karen, what kind words. I've been on many beating websites, and I have to say that you have the most comprehensive website. And it's better than any that I've um, visited. Gosh. That's so good. Thanks, Karen. Um, we don't want to rest on our laurels, though. We always want to improve. So uh, thank you for that. And if there's anything else that you want to add, fill out the survey and put in the notes. It's a little bit of a long survey. So sorry about that. Um, anyway. Uh, this would be fun. Uh, competition shows, a show about jewelry design. That would be fun. Um, there is one. There's a British show. It's called All That Glitters. It's pretty interesting. I've watched that um, and it's pretty fun. Uh, so I don't know. It'd be kind of fun to do something like that here on the live broadcasts. I don't know. It's, you planted a seed. We'll see what happens. All right. Well, let's get to friends. Let's get to this that's going on here. Okay. And you guys, thank you so much for the website love. We really appreciate that. But as always, we want to improve as much as we can. Um, so uh, my goodness, uh, we really appreciate that. Janice is still on vacation uh, this week. So uh, JP will be back next week with me on comments for the live. So never fear. Janice is taking some good, well-earned rest. 
um, which is great. She'll be flying back to her coast uh, this weekend. So, um, so we'll be all back together again next week. So let me show you here. Here's the Red Rocks kit. And as you know, some of you know, if not, I'll tell you, our Tucson, the Tucson show that I went to in February, I bought a ton of pearls. So this is the last of the pearl mix kits from Tucson. Okay. And this is about 100 grams of pearls. So you get this bag full and it's kind of a crimson color, right? Can you see that? It's a beautiful mix of pearls here. Um, I had a similar mix a while back and I wanted to bring, I, I wanted to show you some different ways of using pearls and closing it off. And then we're gonna end with making this bullion. So here's the, the pearls. They come in a variety of sizes. So let's look at those sizes. I'm just gonna pull one right out. I'll do a hole to hole measurement, 9.2 millimeter to, this is a long kind of rice shaped one, 11 millimeter. Uh, here's a smaller one, 6.2. Yeah, I tested right after our retreat just to make sure everything was good. So I am also COVID negative. Thank goodness we have those tests to uh, determine our COVID status. I guess it's just part of the new normal, right? 8.7, this one's got a little nub on it. Thanks. You know, I am wearing the adventure bracelet. Thank you, Andy, uh, for that kind comment. Um, I love this adventure bracelet. I still have the adventure bracelet that I made on the show on Wednesday. It's sitting here. I'm going to have to finish this off. So it's a nice kind of asymmetrical kind of feel to it. I love these so, so much. Um, and thank you for the shout out on the nails. I'm really going to try and keep them up because so many people, even at the retreat, our buddy shared at the retreat, she goes, keep the nails, Kate, keep the nails. So I'm trying. We'll see. We'll see. So yeah, uh, I did them black like my soul. That's the joke that the, my nail tech <laughs> said. So it's true. Um, and it is also true that if beads were drugs, I'd be the worst enabler. It's really true. It's hard to resist these beauties. Okay. So um, anyway, so let's, uh, let's look at this piece that I have here. Let me lift the camera up a bit. Um, this is one that I did, I don't know, a while back, probably on a free tip Friday show when I, um, uh, when I released another kit or maybe we, these were just strands. I can't remember if it wasn't this week, I have no memory, but anyway, this one is strung on, uh, let me see if I can see, I believe it's soft flex underneath here. Okay. So here's the, the, um, the soft flex underneath. And what I did to close this off, I had the soft flex come, come up. I macrameed over it so I could form a loop, then pulled the soft flex back down through this hole that had the bead that had the large hole, and then macrameed over the tail right there. Can you see that there? And then I did the same thing on this side. This one has a little bit of a longer uh, macrame. I glued it. I think I pulled it over. I added a little spot of glue there and then I macrame over the top. This is macrame with Chinese knotting cord. Let me zoom in on it a little bit so you can see it. Uh, no, oh, I have my zoom. <laughs> I have my zoom app up. So when I say zoom and if zoom is up, <laughs> I hit that app. Let's try this. There we go. Let me zoom with my camo. Um, so here it is here. And so then I use that to attach to these really great, we've got these sterling. This is another Tucson find. That sterling um, 
uh, that sterling toggle clasp, which was uh, really fun. And the, the saw flex, this I believe is the medium, the 0 0.019 saw flex. It goes through the pearls beautifully and the center, this has some A dots. And you can see, I'm gonna hold this up so you can see this here. Uh, here it is. So half of it is this um, kind of coppery color pearl and the other half is the green pearl. And you can, and it's not crimp. So Trudy, thank you for asking. It's a great question. Uh, it's not, all it is is I finish off, I string up to here, right? to here, and you can see there's the soft flex underneath there. I string up, then I start my macrame right here, and I macrame down, flat knot, flat knot, flat knot, macrame, macrame, probably about, I don't know, an inch and a half-ish, about, and then I bent it over right here, then the soft flex was laying here, and then I macrame over the original macrame with a new section of macrame, glued it down so the saw flex wouldn't come out, and then glued it here at the bottom and cut away the extra. So um, I'll do a show on this one again, but it's a really, it's a handy, um, it's a really handy uh, uh, closure. Um, Andy was saying uh, to my mom, she loves the notebook uh, she made for the retreat folks. Folks, I have, my mom made three extra and I'm gonna give those away. Uh, maybe next week I'll give them away. Um, but I have three, I think there's three. There might just be two, I don't know. But I'll give those away. But see how great this necklace just wraps around like so, so you can wear it long. And that uh, toggle can just end up right wherever you want it to end up, okay? So, and it looks great, I think, if I do say so myself. Um, super easy. Um, okay. So let me show you a couple of other closures. All right. Here, this is one that I did at the retreat last year. Um, not this past retreat, but the retreat before. And this one I used rings and I use soft flex again here. Okay. And so what I did was I strung these sections of pearls. Let me zoom out a little bit. Uh, those sections of pearls on Softflex. And by the way, Softflex was very generous um, and gave us such a nice, uh, it gave everybody a nice spool of Softflex for their goodie bag. So a big thank you and shout out to Sarah Ayler and the gang over there, as well as the gang from Tierra Cast and from Greenboro. Uh, thank you, all three of you, dear companies um, and ladies uh, for uh, adding to those gift bags. They were really, uh, was really well appreciated. So thank you. Um, so here's that piece that's on Softflex, like so. And then I used a, I crimped, I did a crimp, um, a wire guard that went around a jump ring and that jump ring connected to a soldered ring, like this nun design ring right here or this big tiara cast ring right there. And then it came back down and I crimped it. So all of these connections I'll show you here. Can you see here how it starts and stops? And then these, um, I have, I was playing around with this, so I took them off, but I had those rings that I made. Um, do you remember when I went, I guess it was last year, I guess. I think they're sitting over here because I'm playing around with them. Um, I had these rings that I set the stones in, these practice stone set rings. I was attaching them to those rings there. So it was really fun. It's kind of a fun piece. So all of these rings hang off of this necklace like that. So it was fun times. I have to practice my stone setting because I don't know if I could do this shared prong right now. Maybe I could, but anyway, it's a show about pearls, not about shiny rings. Um, oh, maybe I'll put them 
Ah, there we go. Makes me feel fancy. Uh, okay, so, and I put a little seed bead. Can you see that there? This is an 11 knot. Here between these, the ones that I'm wearing, let me take this off. This is an 8 knot. So you don't have to knot if you don't want to. Um, I'm going to show you today. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of knotting uh, today to show you, and I'm going to actually mix it up a little bit. But see, here's the 11 knot right here, and here's the 8 knot right there. Okay, can you see the difference there? So let's get to um, the um, what I want to show you here. And I'm looking for, uh, I did. Uh, Leslie's asking, did I use the crimp covers on this necklace? I did. Can you see how the crimp cover is right there? So there's the wire guard. Some, the wire guards are connected right to the rings and some they're connected for a little more movement to jump rings that are connected to the rings. Okay. I know, Terry, I'm in a shiny, a shiny mood. I'll go into a, uh, into a fall mode. Maybe I've got some, got some other, maybe a little less shiny, but you know, we love, we love shiny, right? Don't we? Um, Curtis is asking, is it fine, soft flex or regular? I think that this one, because I was doing it at the retreat um, and I had to steal a roll of soft flex from our buddy Jan. You remember that, Jan? Um, I think that was fine. And then I think this one that I did was medium, the 0 0.019. So you could use either. The hand on it is a little bit, uh, a little bit different. This might have a little more swing to it. This might be a little more stiff, but not so that you'd notice. Okay. So choose what works for you. Um, okay. So, uh, let me see here. Okay. Let me show you Emily's and this as always is an ode to Emily Miller. Um, though I've been doing this for a while on my pieces as well, but Emily really has it perfected. And <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> I'm going to show you this on a piece that she made me um, for my birthday a couple of years ago, last year. I don't know when, but she made me this beautiful um, graduated um, vintage, I think these are uh, Japanese glass. I think they're Japanese. They might be Venetian, but they're wound. So I think they might be Japanese. Emily, if you're watching, you can jump in. Sometimes she's watching, but she's, uh, she's stealth behind the scene. Um, okay. So this piece here, so this is a, a set of graduated glass beads. So beautiful. Look at this blue, right? Isn't it gorgeous? And it was so lovely of Emily to make these for me. And can you see she knotted them because I love a knotted stone or a knotted, this is glass, not stone. And what she did was she has a little handmade clasp here at the back and she made her bullion wire. And can you see, oh, yep. Emily is on Emily, I was just saying, I know you've probably been watching this hopefully from the beginning. You and I are going to do another show on this because um, I just think it's fun and you have a lot of really great ideas uh, to work with this as well. Um, yeah, these are probably Czech. Aren't they beautiful? I love them so much. So what Emily did here was she made her own bullion wire, right? And it's so pretty. Um, and so uh, let me show you how I'm going to use this today. Um, one of the things that I, let me prep my thread first so it's ready to go. Okay, let me do this. Um, I have some micro Ceylon right here. 
and and Emily with her wire, she did a really wonderful wire unit, um, wire uh, class at the retreat. You folks made such beautiful things with Emily's wire. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, okay. So I'm going to mix some thread. I'm going to mix my fine Ceylon and my size F silk. All right. I'm going to mix the two colors because I want two colors with this. I don't know. I, I just do. And I'm just going to do a little short piece here so you can see this. Um, let me do like this much, not real long. It's just going to be a little, oh, and look how on the spool. Hmm. Well, so take, so this, I've just unfurled this or unrolled this from my spool and this has a knot so i would have to cut that off usually these spools are um continuous but this is the first time i think using silk on the spool that i've ever gotten a knot that's bizarre but anyway not too much i just i that will dictate how much i'm using so let me put that aside okay so um, let me string this through the thing here. This is kind of a, I've got my beading needle. This is the flexible eye here. It's going through and I've got one strand of there. I'm sorry. I was off the thing. I've got one strand of silk and one strand of regular, uh, size F or micro Ceylon and size F silk. Okay. And I'm just going to slide it through like that. Okay. So, um, okay. Then what I need, I'm going to make some bullion wire for you. And I'm going to use as the base. Um, and this is similar to our ready-made bullion, right? Our really fine ready-made. Um, I like making the bullion my guess is that Emily used probably about a 24 gauge here. I have a 24 gauge here, and I also have a 22 gauge. I'm going to make mine a little heavier like this, just for fun, to just mix it up. And I'm also going to do something else with it that you're going to see. So, so I want it to be kind of heavy. So here's 22. I'm going to cut off, I don't know, maybe a little more than a foot. And I'm going to wrap it. I don't know, we may have already done this with Emily too, but there's so many ways to use a good coil of wire. Um, you can see here how I'm holding this. <laughs> Emily says, use the 24. <laughs> I'm going to use a 22. You're going to see what I do. Um, um, and we'll put that one on the books too. Gosh, we've got so much to schedule. Emily, it was just a week ago that we were going to the retreat. This week has passed by kind of fast, hasn't it? So there's a question here. Um, what is bullion wire? So the bullion wire, you see this on fancy, um, on fancy necklaces where it's a little coil, usually very fine of wire that sits over the loop that connects the loop to the clasp. So you see it on really high end pieces. And we've talked about bullion wire before, but the, um, and you also see it sometimes when you buy high end uh, stones, when you buy stones that are um, like from India, and they have just a little coil of wire in between. So here's the bullion and I'm just wrapping. So I'm wrapping, in my case, I'm wrapping 22, but you could use 24, you could use 26. If you wanted it to be really fine, you could use 28. Um, 
but we'll do a show where we delve into it a little bit more and I'll have Emily do it with me um, because she has, I'm sure she's got something to say about the bullion wire and I want to know. This is just bare copper wire and we're just wrapping one wrap. See that next to the other? All right. Thank you, Michelle. I'm going to put this up. Thank you for always saying how to make your name appear on StreamYard. If you're watching in the group and in the group only because groups are private, you have to allow the group permission into StreamYard to show your name. So you can read that, read that over. Thank you, Michelle. As always, I know I can count on you. My sister in Regina, across the border. My Canadian bead sister. Here we go. So I've made a little coil here. Okay. And Marianne is asking, I've always called it French wire. It can also be called French wire or bullion wire. They're interchangeable. Okay. And Jermaine is asking, uh, I'm what gauge am I wrapping around? This is 16 gauge here, but you can also use like a skinny knitting needle or whatever. I just grabbed the wire because I had it here. So this is 16 gauge. You could also wrap it around um, 14 gauge as well. Okay. So um, this, we could also take this, right, Emily, and wrap this around and make a bead. There's so much you can do with just this basic thing. So, um, but today I'm going to make bullion. So let me slide it off. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to come in and I'm going to clip away my extra and I'm going to use the tip of my plier here and I'm going to come in and clip that extra wire away. And I'm just going to set this aside for the moment. And this is about, I don't know, I've got about a two inch coil now to work with. Okay, so I need to decide what kind of clasp or what I'm going to put on the end or whatever. Um, oh, bullion, thank you, M. Bullion wire is also used for embroidery, like bangles and the dangles that hem, hang from epaulets. That is correct. So if you look at old school epaulets, you'll see that it's all like couched and, and embroidered with, um, with bullion wire, usually in some kind of gold or silver metallic. Very, very pretty. I'm going to use this um, chain link, I think. I also have this big tiara cast loop. I don't know. Maybe I'll use that small nun design. I can't really decide what I want to do. Let me just show you the technique and then we'll figure it out from there. Okay. So I'm going to cut, I want my loops to be pretty big. So I'm going to cut about a half inch of wire off of this coil about right there. And since I was using kind of a heavy loop, that's why I used 22 gauge because I wanted it to be a little heavier. That one's a little bit longer. So let me make it. Let me see if it's going to loop around or if it needs to be a little bit longer. It is a little stiff, Emily. You're right. But I wanted 22. I was stubborn. Yeah, I think that'll work. I think I need it to be just a touch longer. So this is about just a hair over a half inch, just a hair. So let me cut these so that they're equal. And then what you want to do, sorry, I've got to put it right up to my eyes here off camera to cut it. So I'm in my focal range. What I want to do is I want to make sure that when I cut it, I don't have any um, little snag on it. So see here at the end of that bullion wire, 
Can you see that there? It's kind of sticking up. So I'm going to take it out of the frame, put it up close to my focal range so I don't screw up the cut. And there we go. You can see now it's nice and smooth. And I'm going to do that same thing with this one. Emily, you're probably right. This might all end in tears, but we'll see. That's the beauty of doing a live, right? And then I'm going to cut this coil into smaller little coils here. Okay, and I'm going to clip that one. Sorry, off camera so I can see it. All right, there we go. Now I've got some tiny coils as well. Okay. So uh, the bigger size would look awesome over leather. Yeah, I never even thought about doing it over leather. Oh, I'm in the Emily, come down. Let's bead. <laughs> we had such a good time at the retreat. I know I keep talking about that and I know it's not those of you who couldn't come. We missed you all, to be honest. It was really fun. We had a good time. Um, I think people had fun. Um, it was just really a, a joyous time, but next time, next time. All right, so what I like doing is I like, yeah, Emily's saying we need a retreat for us to plan the retreat. It really is. That's exactly what we need. And didn't we say we were going to go to the spa? I think we did. So <laughs> maybe we should do it there. Uh, I'm going to put this eight millimeter. What I really want is maybe a six millimeter bead here but I need something with a large enough hole so that I can come back around and through this bead. Let's see if it, um, if this will work. Let me, let me zoom in just a little bit. And remember folks, the pearl mix goes on sale uh, at noon. So I'll end the broadcast a little beforehand so you can prep. I've got a limited amount uh, we've got, I, we did about a hundred bags. So, um, so there's plenty for everyone, but it will sell out pretty quickly. Um, just because you folks love these pearl mixes and we really appreciate that. So I'm going to go down here to the end. And if this were a long, not a demo piece, but a real piece, I'd have a lot more, um, I'd have a lot more thread here, right? So this is doubled around my needle. I put my piece of bullion wire on. And now I'm going to go through, maybe I'll just go through this ring because it's big, right? And it's kind of weighty. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to go through. Let's hope that all of these go through. And they do. Perfect. This carnelian. Now we need to get this bullion wire to curve right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get my uh, plier or a mandrel or something that works nicely, but I'm going to get, I think, just my brown mix plier. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to loop that bullion so it has like a little bit of a mandrel to it. So it helps me curve it, right? Now I'm going to slide this bead, this end into that bullion wire that I've made. Squeeze it and go up, up and around through the bead. So you can see all of my threads are sitting here. And now I'm going to tie all of this into a knot. So this knot on the end is going to be kind of chunky monkey. Okay, but that's okay. Let me get this. Tighten that up. Now, again, if this were real jewelry making time and not Kate demo time, I would glue this with my 
Oh, this is a little loose. Let me see if I can get this thread down here a little bit more. I would glue this with my GS Hypo and I could then cut away the tails. Let me see if I can walk this. That's a little bit better. But remember, I've got the silk. I wanted two colors. And I wanted the strength, because I'm putting a lot of metal in this, I wanted to add the strength of the, the micro Ceylon. Not that the, the, that the silk isn't strong enough, but I just wanted a little extra just a little extra something. Plus, I like the way that the two colors of the thread look in the knot. So I would glue that, glue, glue, glue. And let me get my thread burner. And I'm going to burn that away. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to put all of this through. thread burner. Oops. Maybe I'll just do two at a time. It seems like that's what it wants. So I will listen. Bring my thread burner. You need to be real careful because I've got all these threads here. I don't want to burn away the wrong thread. So let me scoot those threads out of the way. Hang on to this thread. Again, remember I've glued we're pretending I've glued. Push the button on the thread burner, and it's just going to take those two away. And then we're going to do the same with this. I like using the thread burner to remove threads because it does kind of cauterize the thread and seals the end so the end doesn't come unfurled. Now, can you see there's a little tiny nub of thread there? So I'm going to heat the tip of my thread burner. Remember, we also want to use our thread burner in a well-ventilated area because it does have a little bit of right, smoke that comes off of that. See how I'm just gently tapping that thread down. And since I'm mixing the, um, oh, see, I was too ambitious. I lost one. Oh, well, that doesn't matter. I'm just going to keep it going and I'll knot it on this side. Um, you want to be real careful so that this doesn't happen. Wah, wah. But it's sealed. Everything else is sealed, just this one. Oh, well, I'll show you what happens when something like that occurs. No big deal. Let me zoom out. And we'll just keep going. Okay. Uh, let me put my lid on my thread burner so that this little tip, it's hot now too. It cools off pretty quickly, but you know, so it, but don't worry, it's fine. I'm just going to slide this thread down past this just a little bit. And I'm going to put on my first pearl. And, all right, so let me tell you, uh, this pearl doesn't want to fit over all of these. I thought it might, but it doesn't. So it's a good thing that I checked it. What I'm going to do here. thought it would take a micro boo. Well, let me take out let me see if it's just this one. Yeah, see it goes over here. But it doesn't like this one. But the carnelian liked it. Let me put this back in. It's 
to try it. No, we don't want to force it. Okay, so, oh well, that's okay. I could use, so let's talk about what we could do in this instance. Okay. Uh, I could get rid of this red strand. So I've got one strand of the gray and one strand of the red. Let me clip that away. Okay. So I have this on my needle. So I'll go through here. And I'll go past the doubled strand. And I'll get another needle. Where there's a will, there's a way, right? I'm going to get my micro. A zap needle wouldn't really, the pearls, and if you watch, pearls always have holes. Yeah, see, there we go. That goes through. Pearls always have a hole that are a little bit smaller, right? So um, I could ream all these, but there's no way if I were stringing a whole necklace with these bad boys, there is no way I would um, ream out all the beads I needed for the necklace. So what I'll do is, yeah, here we go. That looks good. So the needle was just... This ending was just too bulky to, um, to get through all four strands at once. So I have a needle on the gray. I have a needle on the red. And we just string one through the red. So when it strings on, it's actually not going on four strand, strands. It's going on two. Oops, crash. Something just fell. So there we go. Okay, so that works just fine. Let me show you what I wanted to do with that other bullion, which is why I introduced using Ceylon here in the first place. You could just use a doubled strand of thread, right? You could try a double strand of the micro or a doubled strand of the, um, you could also try a doubled strand of the fine to see if that worked. The double strand of the fine might be too heavy. Okay, so here are my knots here. I'm gonna come back through, I'm gonna put these two through one needle. Maybe I'll put it through two, get that back. If your needle kind of collapses, see that? flexible eye needle and how that flexes down. You can get your round nose plier and open up the eye of that needle right there. So we're back in business. Now, I'm gonna hold these two needles together See, I've got these little bits of bullion wire. I can use these bullion pieces of bullion wire. Let me use these carnelian rounds. I could use my, oh, I know what I, well, let me use this. Hang on. Let me do this. See, so this is on. Look at how cool that piece of bullion wire that I made looks as a spacer. Let me put on a pearl. Going through one, going through the other. Tightening that up. Let me put a knot right there. The hole in this pearl, I mean in this carnelian, is kind of big. 
So I'm going to double that through twice. I'm going to go through twice and tie the knot. I'm not going to detail the knotting techniques. I've done pearl knotting a ton lately. So you can go back through the different shows. We've got a lot of shows on pearl knotting lately. So I'll go through this, tighten it down. Let's take a look at, I have some of our carved marquee cut stones. Look at these curved marquee. Are these carved marquee? Aren't those beautiful? I'm going to slide that one on. Let's see what the whole size looks on this. Pretty big, but I don't want to force a thread through it either, right? Because um, they're, they're not super delicate, but they're also not like a solid pearl. They're uh, semi-precious. So you can crack them if you're not overly careful. I just want to be kind of careful with it. Let's open this up. I could also put a little bit, I could seal the end. See how my silk is, is um, fraying here. I could put a little bit of um, zap glue on the end, just a little, or a little bit of GS Hypo to keep this from, um, from fraying. So it'll make it easier for me to thread it through the needle but I'm not going to take the time to do it. Let's go ahead. I'm going to slide that silk first because it's doubled. It's a little heavier. Pull it through. And then I'm going to do the second one. I'm sorry. If you folks hear a lot of like random noise in the background, I think that the air conditioning for our neighbor's house went out. So there are air conditioning guys here today um, next door. And I think they're, doing something up on their roof. So I'm sorry if you hear uh, a lot of random um, noise there. So here we go. Here's this one. Let's tie the knot. This is really a random string of consciousness for sure. <clears throat> Let me go ahead and I'm going to add another pearl. This Red Rocks kit, I named it after the Red Rocks Amphitheater in Colorado because Red Rocks, I got all of these beautiful pearls in Tucson, which is also in the middle of the desert, right? So beautiful there. And it really reminded me of the beautiful red colors of the desert. So that's what this is titled after. Go ahead, <clears throat> flip that through. Put another pearl on. It's not too bad working with these two needles. It's not optimal, but it does give me the thread look that I want, right? So, um, yeah. Oh, this is a good question Chesabel has. Um, let me, I'm going to, let me put this last thing on and then I'll show you a little trick about your Ceylon or your threads twisting. Okay. I'll, I'll show you that. And I need to do that with a full front camera, but I'll, I'll do that in a second. Let's put those through. We want to be careful with the two needles that we don't split this silk. So see how I grab the silk down here. So it's kind of tight through the hole, and then I'll slide this through, trying not to catch the silk that's already through the bead. Then I'll put these two together, and I'll put my last little cut-off piece of bullion wire, and it acts like a little charming little spacer here. Okay? It's kind of pretty, kind of interesting, right? 
So uh, let me add one more pearl just to finish it off there. I'll turn it off. So here we go through the, the um, silk. Kind of meditative, you know. Slide the needle with the seam on through, trying to avoid splitting the silk thread there, pulling it through. You can also pre string um, a bunch of these. You know, that's how we do this sometimes. Um, we pre-string a lot of them and then knot them on. My buddy Cynthia Thornton also does it that way. If you've watched their uh, Cynthia's videos with her and Azalea, she's also been doing a lot of pearl knotting lately. So it was pretty cool. So you can see there's that nice little length. Okay. But let me show you. Um, I love this purple combo. Look, we could also put um, the carved. I had one of the carved drops. I don't know what. Um, the carved drops in amethyst. Here's the carved drop in um, in uh, lapis. That would be really pretty too. You could put a drop in there. Wouldn't that be gorgeous? So pretty. Okay. So the thread sizes that I used here. This is Ceylon. Just to reiterate, Ceylon and fine silk in double F. Okay, so let me show you, um, it's Jezebel's question is, I'm finally getting more comfortable with knotting, which is awesome, but I'm having trouble with the seal on twisting up and getting caught in the knot. Any tips on how to keep the thread twisting on itself? Yes. So let me show you. Um, let me, uh, well, let me do this first and then I'll do the full. Um, so see here, I've got the, the needle um, and I'm going to open this up, open this loop up. Michelle is asking, she only got one of the green, one of the green leaves. Michelle, we are getting the green carved leaves back in. I think they were so popular and I think I'm going to get them in a few other colors as well. There are other carvings that we can get. So stay tuned. I promise those will come back. Um, let me use just a uh, double strand. Let me just do this kind of short and it'll kind of illustrate it. I'm going to do a short doubled strand of the micro. I'm not sure if that's going to fit. Let me just test it. If it doesn't, then I won't use a double. I'll use a single. Let's check and see if this goes over. How am I doing on time? Not bad. Okay. It's a little tight, but it it's a little too tight for my... See, it doesn't slide as nicely as I might want it to. So I'm going to pull this second strand out. There we go. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide off this pearl. And this is how I test, how I should test, right, before I do this. So here's this. Um, and I don't knot before or after this spacer. I don't. That's a good question. Uh, because the knot would make it sit kind of funny. So there's a knot between the beads here, but not between the coiled spacer. And here, there's no knot on top of the bullion. It's here between these two beads. Okay. So I'm going to get my length of thread here. This is micro. Whoops. Sorry, I hit the camera. With that, let me cut this away. And I'm going to do this kind of fast, but I want to show you how uh, I untwist the thread. So here's my knot, and I put uh, an end tip or however it is I'd wanted to deal with this end. Okay, and so now here, I want to make sure that this is twisted. And let me put on a few pearls here. And I'm going to show you why I have the front view on here. Let me just see if I can put these on real quick. Two. I think I need, I need some magnifiers that are this 
oh, like a foot away from me, focal range. Right. Camera glasses is what I mean. Okay, so these are on. All right. So now, let me hide that comment. Let me make me big here. Okay, so here it is. And I'm going to start knotting this. So one of the things that I do, and I talked about this this weekend when we were pearl knotting um, at the retreat, when this is doubled over, I automatically get my finger in between that strand of thread. And I'm always doing that. And that what that is what untwists. Of course, I use gray thread, so it's really hard to see. But right, so I've got my finger in there. Then I slide this strand up a bit. And when I make my knot to go around, I like kind of wrap my thumbnail or run my thumbnail down that thread. So the thread is laying side by side and not twisted, if that makes sense. So then I'll drop my pearls through. However you do it, I'm going to hand knot these. I'm going to come in. And as I pull the knot, can you see how this thread really isn't twisted? It's pretty straight, right? Then I'll split the threads again and tighten that up. All right. So now I'll bring my next bead down here. It's something I almost automatically do all the time, put my finger in the middle. And it doesn't have to be every bead, but I do that a lot where I have my finger in the middle so that the, this thread is nice and straight. And then I'll put this around, knot it, so that all of this working thread that I'm using is not twisted. I hope that helps with your technique. Just little hand movements that keep this thread. See, it's see, I didn't um, straighten it, so you can see how my thread's starting to twist. So that's why I get my finger in there and see how that rotates around. It's getting that twist out of the thread. If you don't straighten out your thread every two or three pearls, maybe, that's when you're going to get an over twist in your nylon threads or even your silk threads. So see here, I split the threads and I tighten it down and that gives me a nice straight thread there. So you can see, let me put this one back on. I hope that answers the question, but you can see, and also with this micro, doubled over micro, look at how nice of a knot size that I get. Okay, it's not as quite as large as this uh, doubled over silk, but if I'm going to use like a bunch of metal beads or something in here in this um, strand, the nylon thread is a great, great um, uh, thread to knot with. So I hope that's helpful. Okay. So uh, just to reiterate, we've done these knots. We did, um, where's the rest of my, I don't know where my demo necklaces went. Is that what fell over? Didn't I just have two necklaces that I was showing you? <laughs> Here's Emily's pretty piece that she made me. And then, um, oh, I put them back on the mail. There we go. Then we also showed, if you came in a little late, you can start that from the beginning. Um, here is <clears throat> the one on Softlex with the macrame end. And here's the one on Softlex where the... Um, there's a wire guard and a crimp cover, and you can do it with um, jump rings like this or plain like this. Okay, good. I'm glad, Jessabel. Good. That I, I think that really will um, help you quite a bit. Look at this bead soup on here. Let me zoom out just a little bit. And thanks for asking, Leslie. Yes, we had a wonderful birthday dinner with my dear mama. We had a good time hosting and eating and drinking to her health, for sure. 
So here's this one. Here's this closure. I'll lay this out and you can take a screenshot of what we've done today. Here's this closure right here. That one's in. Here's this one. Let me move it kind of to the middle. Okay. And go ahead and this is this is screenshot time. Screenshot time right here. So you can remember these guys on this side. Okay. So uh, this pearl mix, as I said, the beautiful Red Rocks pearl mix um, is going to drop at noon. It'll be right there. Um, you'll click right on that. Um, right there it is uh, on that photo right on the home page. It'll take you right to the page. You can refresh it if it doesn't pop up right away. Um, I used uh, some size F silk, some micro ceylon. Uh, I used 22 gauge wire for this bullion. You can also use 24 wrapped over 16 gauge wire. Um, the needle size I used was a medium size needle. And then you could use ceylon if you wanted to do this closure, you could use ceylon or this is 0.4 millimeter uh, Chinese knotting cord. Okay, so it's all there. You have about, I don't know, about 12 minutes before it goes live. So if you want to pop on over to Bead Shop, um, start putting things in your cart, then put that kit in and then check out because remember um, the just putting in your cart doesn't reserve it for you. You have to go ahead and complete the checkout process. Also, remember, we do have our um, discount codes for August. Sun 10, 10% off 50 or more. Sun 15, 15% off 75 or more. Um, so don't forget to use that discount code in your cart, and that will knock some, some money off of your total. You can also use your... Um, your VIB coupons, if you have any coupon codes or anything like that. And I also wanted to mention our survey is live. It'll be up live for a, another few days. So we would love to hear your feedback about what we're doing so that we can um, make everything as smooth as we can. And yes, I know wish lists aren't working and a new wish list is coming soon. So thanks for your patience. Um, other than that, Folks, I will see you all uh, next week. Um, we're going to do, we'll have our show both Wednesday and Friday. Let me tell you what we've got coming up um, because I think, let me look at my, my promo calendar. Next week is the official kind of end of summer, I guess. We're going to hit. Labor Day soon. Um, the um, next week on the 30th, my friends, is the African Helix bracelet with Emily. Emily's going to do a really, uh, she has a really great seed bead uh, project for you all. Um, so Emily will be on here with me next week. And then on the 1st, on Friday, my birthday month starts September 1st and the monthly mix drops. Um, so I think you folks are going to really love it. I am super stoked for it. So we'll have the monthly mix launch um, and I'll talk to you about the monthly mix next Friday. So that's my story, my friends. I'm sticking to it. Thank you so much uh, for joining me today. Don't forget to uh, hit us up on all of our social. If you have any questions, shoot us an email. Have a really great, fantastic, and creative weekend. And I will see all of you all next week with our Emily Miller. Thanks, everybody. Talk with you soon. Bye-bye.